contemplating this possibility of a lateral arrangement of worlds, a plurality of overlapping Earths along whose linking axis a person can somehow move, can travel in a mysterious way from worse to fair to good to excellent, contemplating this in theological terms, perhaps we could say that herewith we suddenly decipher the elliptical utterances which Christ expressed regarding the kingdom of God, specifically where it is located. Okay, so you already said there may be different worlds coexisting at the same time, basically, and I guess that is what he tried to explain with the picture. They are a little bit different. Some may be more different than others. You know, painting used to be replaced, which could be a complete different timeline, or then there was something that was altered, so there were just small differences. He seems to have given contradictory and puzzling answers. But suppose, just suppose for an instant, that the cause of the perplexity lay not in any desire on his part to baffle or to hide, but in the inadequacy of the question. My kingdom is not of this world, he is reported to have said. The kingdom is within you, or possibly it is among you. I put before you now the notion which I personally find exciting, that he may have had in mind that which I speak of as the lateral axis of overlapping realms which contain among them a spectrum of aspects ranging from the unspeakably malignant to the beautiful. So, okay, so he's saying that God may have created overlapping worlds, and that is basically an image I once had before, because we say in manifesting that we all have our own quantum bubble, right? And the image I once channeled was imagine there would be like the tiniest like layer around the globe <laughs> and that is just yours okay um, however you meet other people and there would be another tiny layer I mean so thin that would never be able to see it and then you meet however each of these people they have their own yeah let's call it well layer is a good word but I don't know how to how else to explain it. It's sometimes hard when you download images to really find the words for it. But every person basically has like their own, I don't want to say net, yeah, like a thin, thin, thin layer around this earth. And we run into people, even though we have the power to really play with our realm. Let's call it that. <laughs> But since we are not the only person on this world, yeah, we do meet others. We can say we meet others in, in timelines, yes. And in every timeline you meet someone, that person obviously manifested you being there as well. No one has power over you, but you don't have any power over them in their own timeline, in their own quantum bubble is a term I've also heard. But again, I envisioned it as like a tiny, thin, 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 thin layer like a grid, I don't know how to explain it, that is your personal one and then you have people you never met so they are far away but you do have those people that you encounter and then your worlds just like collide. And Christ was saying over and over again that there really are many objective realms somehow related and somehow bridgeable by living not dead men and that the most wondrous of these worlds was a just kingdom in which either he himself or God himself or both of them rule. And he did not merely speak of a variety of ways of subjectively viewing one world. The kingdom was and is an actual different place at the opposite end of continua, starting with slavery and utter pain. It was his mission to teach his disciples the secret of crossing along this orthogonal path. So what do you may mean with crossing along the orthogonal path, maybe what we call shifting timelines or ascension. You may have one timeline where you experienced a negative thing, let's say you're physically ill for example, and then there is health in another one. And then there is the infinite possibilities of course all the steps to get there, you know, getting a little bit better, 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 better. Some people may just jump from here to there and then we have like miraculous healings. But for many people it may be like crossing to get there from sick to healthy or from really unhappy, depressed to living the life of your dreams. So what ascension may be is to become 
aware and to look at what is not good right now. I mean, this channel is very much also about love, you know, not being able to manifest love because there is old wounds or lack of self-love, a negative self-concept. Then we learn to do the shadow work. We work on that by, for example, using Ho'oponopono revision technique, whatever it is. And then we slowly shift timelines to the desired one in that specific area. Of course, there's always more. That's one thing I'm going to talk about later when he is talking about remembering dying and at one point i had the download you could say you know channeling spirit for years now that reincarnation is not what we used to think because time is an illusion right it doesn't exist when we die we may shift to the next timeline where that incident didn't happen let's say you died because we, you were run over by a car and then you shift to a timeline where that car missed you and in that video about manifesting someone else coming back from the dead one of my viewers actually i think it may be the one who wanted to manifest someone coming back from the dead has experienced that too she remembered getting into a car crash and she screamed and then all of a sudden she saw that truck going past and that crash didn't happen and her best friend who was driving was just like why were you screaming what happened and she was like well, I don't know, I just felt like I got hit by that truck. <laughs> so in that moment where she died in that timeline, she shifted into the one where that incident did not happen. Extremely fascinating, right? I'm going to make an extra video just on that. So make sure you subscribe for that. We're going to talk about death and what happens when we manifest. And so there will be more to come. Also a little bit more later in this video. But when we evolve, we shift from maybe a very, let's say negative without trying to judge life, like a negative experience that can be quite subjective, right? To shifting more where we are happy. And I think that is what he means by that, by changing from the malignant to the beautiful. And he quotes Christ who said that, there are many different realms that are somehow related and not just related but bridgeable which means again this is shifting it is shifting from one reality to another of course it can go the other way around when we start negative thinking and we put a lot of energy into negative thoughts then we always get matched our frequency and our assumptions it's a law of assumptions right and then we can of course shift into the not so beautiful experience even though i think we all aim to go that way where the beautiful life awaits us and not just that they're different worlds they are just so god jesus ruled there and i think this is like a metaphor god as in the i am you know as the Heavenly god had said i am that is God. We create our reality. And when we rule that kingdom, we have awakened. We have found our power within us. Maybe we have found Christ consciousness, which is supposed to be love also for others. So according to Philip K. Dick, <laughs> Jesus was teaching his disciples not to wait for some kingdom in the afterlife, but to shift timelines where happiness or their good life awaits them. And he taught the method of getting there. <laughs> so let's continue. He did not merely report what lay there. He taught the method of getting there. But tragically, the secret was lost. The enemy, the Roman authority, crushed it. And so we do not have it. But perhaps we can refine it, since we know that such a secret exists. Yeah, we know the secret exists. and. I think right now in well, Aquarius, right, age of Aquarius that has just started, we are refining it. I mean, Neville Goddard's teachings, they're over 50 years old and now they're like really resurfacing, not just him, other teachers as well. I mean, we do have Abraham Hicks, we do have, there's plenty out there, but right now manifesting and law of attraction, law of assumption, it's really on the rise. And now young people, like people you would never even consider to be spiritual at all are talking about it. So this is happening right now. It's exciting, really exciting times. Kingdom is ever to be established here on earth or whether it is a place or state we go to after death. 
I'm sure I don't have to tell you that this issue has been a fundamental one and an unresolved one throughout the history of Christianity. Christ and St. Paul both seem to say emphatically that an actual breaking through into time, that is specifically what they say, a breaking through into time, into our world, by the host of God, will unexpectedly occur. Thereupon, after some exciting drama, a thousand-year paradise, a rightful kingdom will be established, at least for those who have done their homework and chores and generally paid attention, have not gone to sleep, as one parable puts it. So he said that people who are not asleep, who are waking, who are doing the chores, who are doing the work, they can reach the kingdom. And what work is it? Well, in my opinion, I'm a big fan of shadow work. Shadow work is nothing super spiritual. I know there's coaches out there who say, no, you don't have to do shadow work. But the thing is, you always manifest which is dominant in our subconscious mind. And if we have been, let's say, neglected over and over and over again, your subconscious mind will expect that to happen. So we have to put in the work to face that shadow, neglect in that case, and to do the work. As I said, for example, by doing Ho'oponopono revision technique, there's many different techniques. It's always important to find one that suits you. Also, I learned hypnotherapy. What we do in the revision technique, it is something that we would do in hypnosis as well. But we sometimes have to face the past. Do we always have to do it to manifest? No, absolutely not, because it doesn't require shadow work, for example, to manifest a parking spot or a free coffee, unless, of course, you maybe had a traumatic experience where it was very important to be there somewhere on time and you didn't find a parking spot and then you have the belief I never find a parking spot then I would revise that but usually we don't have like a strong negative story to those kind of things but if we do have a negative strong story about something if our self-concept is I never get this this is never happening for me I'm the one who always is dot 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 and add any negative experience then we may have to use some actual energy to replace that assumption and that is what I would call shadow work because that assumption it is a kind of shadow it is something probably in the subconscious that is manifesting an autopilot over and over and over again so yes work is required for some things if you want to go over there if you don't have any negative assumptions or they're just tiny, then it may be enough to do your scripting or your affirmations in order to get there. For some things, it is enough to just, I don't do do the 10K challenge with affirmations and replace the old program. It may happen for many things, but if there has been some kind of trauma or, or a really severe experience, then we actually may have to yeah, roll up the sleeves and dig in to yeah, dig out the roots before we plant pretty seeds. Is it necessary for everything you want to manifest? Absolutely not. But if you wanted to manifest something for a while and it is not happening, then I would find the assumption because the stronger assumption wins. And as I said to my clients all the time, it's when you have an assumption like not deserving love because you have been neglected or you don't treat yourself accordingly, then you can waste your time to manifest that person showing you love. Maybe they will and show you love, but then they will retrieve again because it is not a match to your self-concept. So then yes, it may actually require some work to get there. We are enjoined repeatedly in the New Testament to be vigilant, that for the Christian it is always day. There is always light by which he can see this event when it comes. See this event. Does that imply that many persons who are somehow asleep or blind or not vigilant, they will not see it even though it occurs? Well, he's talking that some blind people don't see something even though it occurs. I don't really know what to make with that because I believe that yeah, a blind person, and by blind we mean unawakened, somebody who has not realized that they have the power to change. They don't know that they may be able to shift timelines. But what is not happening is that if they are blind and they don't do the work, they don't shift here. What could happen, however, is you can manifest things even knowing about the law of assumption. You know, um, maybe 
someone realized, okay, I've always had unhealthy relationships and I now go and seek therapy. I'm going to work on that just so that I can get better and have happier relationships because I don't have old patterns anymore. So they will maybe experience then attracting a healthier relationship, but they won't know that they did it somewhat consciously. It is something that is happening in the subconscious mind because you need to remember we always manifest every little thing the experience. It is something that we manifest that there's nothing we did not ever manifest. But many things that we do manifest are most of the things are actually subconscious. As I said earlier, we always manifest what is hidden in our subconscious mind. Consider the significance which can be assigned to these notions. The kingdom will come here unexpectedly. This is always stressed. The rightful faithful shall see it because for them it is always daytime. But for the others, what seems expressed here is the paradoxical but enthralling thought that, and hear this and ponder, the kingdom were it established here would not be visible to those outsiders. So the kingdom is not visible to outsiders. That could also mean, I mean, it's my interpretation. We must remember, he is talking about his experience and he has thought about it a lot. He doesn't have that knowledge that we do have now at this point, right? So what I'm doing is I'm taking what I have learned and kind of applying it to this or adding on or just taking his experience and kind of like put it into different boxes. <laughs> but the way I see it is, let's say there's something big happening in the collective, like a war, for example. Some people who realize that they can shift timelines, they can manifest getting into another timeline where that thing either never happened, right? Maybe they were never in the energy to experience that thing, so they have never been there, even though part of their soul always has been there. I do have a video about timelines that I'm going to link below where I'm explaining how our soul is making all of the different experiences we do, but our conscious mind always is making one. And that is what we are talking about, you know, like this reincarnation, that once we finished one experience, and maybe we have started with the negative ones, then we get to shift into the next, let's say, like higher one until we reach our kingdom. But let's say we are in a reality where there is something that war happening. And if we know how to manifest, we can, of course, consciously manifest shifting into a timeline where that ended really quickly. But those who do not know how to do that and then maybe they focus on the bad news they have or like we had COVID, for example, or pandemic, you know, those who do not know that their subconscious mind, their thoughts manifest, will not be able to get there if they really focus on the negative things, you know, if they don't stay on a mental diet and watch the news and then they get scared by everything that they experience. Those people will not shift there. They will stay in that timeline where that thing, whatever war pandemic is going to get bigger instead of solving itself or it will take a lot longer until it does resolve itself. Not everybody get to shift into that timeline. So you may have friends who are very negative and they will stay in this timeline. However, if you shift to a new timeline, you will be confronted with another version of them, the version of them who also shifted. So you would not make the experience of them not coming with you. Unless, of course, that would be your assumption. If your assumption would be like, oh, okay, they're not going to change and I don't think I want to be friends with them anymore or I don't want them in my life anymore because we're not a match, then you would shift into another timeline where that person may not be your friend in this example. So you see, everybody would have the ability to shift, but not everyone does because in order to consciously shift, you don't even need to know about the law of assumption, right? But you maybe need to have faith in a higher power and feel in your 
get, that it will get resolved or you're just a very optimistic person because your assumptions manifest. But if your assumptions are, oh my God, this is a bad thing happening right now and it's getting worse and worse and worse, then that will be the experience. And that person might even go to another timeline where it is even worse than what they already have experienced. Awareness can really help, but awareness, it could just be also like a sense, like I am being an optimistic person, or I learn to stay on a mental diet, even if I don't know what a mental diet is, and I don't call it like that, I'm just an optimistic person. But something within yourself determines if you reach that like kingdom or not. Okay, let's continue. I offer the idea that in more modern terms, what is meant that some of us will travel laterally to that better world and some will not. Well, okay, he just said it in his own words. <laughs> so let's continue. They will remain stuck along the lateral axis, which means that for them the kingdom did not come, not in their al alternative world. And yet, meantime, it did come in ours. So it comes, and yet it does not come. Amazing. Yes, absolutely amazing. It happens simultaneously. You know, both outcomes happen. And as I just said, your assumptions decide which one you experience. But Source, God, Spirit, however you want to call it, <laughs> higher power already created both. They simultaneously exist. Well, you could say the kingdom and hell at the same time. And probably some in the middle as well. I mean, infinite realities, right? I'm going to cut down to here. If you've followed my conjectures about the overlapping of these alternate worlds, and you sense as I do the possibility that if there are three or four or two, there may be 30 or 3,000 of them, and that some of us live in this one, others of us in another one, others in others, and that events on one track cannot be perceived by persons not in that track. Okay, as I said, I believe that our soul is experiencing a multitude of timelines. I believe there's more than 3,000. It's probably infinite. <laughs> but of course, not in all of those timelines you exist because your parents didn't meet in all of those timelines, right? In some timeline, your mom stayed together with somebody else or met someone else and your dad met someone else. Maybe they got together and it didn't work out and you were never born. So if there's infinite realities, of course, not everyone does exist in each of them, but we all exist in many, 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 like probably also an infinite number of them. <laughs> Well, let me say what I want to say and be done with it. I think I once experienced a tract in which the Savior returned, but I experienced it just briefly. So this is the first time he's talking about shifting timelines and the Savior returns. That could mean many things. Did he return physically or is it just Christ consciousness in some way?